tickets are still available. Bobby Clark, A tickets. Final call for autographs for Paul Coffey. Last call for B tickets for Raymond Moore. Like line up out the door. The magnitude of the passion of the people who show up to buy here. The exposure at a national event. This is the biggest show in Canada. If you're going to be in the memorabilia business and not come here, it's a bad move. I'm Paul Coffey of Bolton Town. It's great to be back here at the uh, memorabilia show at the International Center in Toronto. We don't do a lot of shows uh, because there aren't a lot of great shows. I've been coming for the Expo for 10 years now because, for my opinion, for dollar for dollar, it's the best show going. Yeah, I think this is a, a, a place where we have to be. I tell everybody this is the closest show I do to home, and it's in another country, but oh, I love coming to the show. All, all around uh, exposure for us. From a greed point of view, it's a money-making cash cow. It's really the only show I do. The number of booths justifies the business I'm doing. I've been coming here, I think, 13 years. Just my 26th show, I think. This is the place to be, twice a year. Everybody knows that. Everybody gears their business to come in here. We obviously advertise that we will only do these two shows. We let people know at least six months ahead of time where we'll be. And we try to coordinate our entire buying trip and uh, show schedule around these two particular events. We really look forward to them each year. We come in early because there's a lot of business we do before the show and after the show, obviously during the show with a lot of dealers here. And it really is an absolutely wonderful environment with a lot of friendly dealers and it's just a lot of fun to come out here, see all the great autograph guests. I meet a lot of the, the customers here and it's a lot of fun to uh, transact business with all of our friends north of the border as well. There's certain things you walk in you can make good money on if you can turn it over, right? This is kind of neat. This is actually from a Family Guy card set. That's actually a real sketch of um, one of the artists from the Family Guy TV series. It's kind of different. It's got Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Isaiah and Julia Zerving on one card. There's only 10 of these in the world. George visiting a card and a Montreal Canadian team photo, 1931-32. Probably one of the best teams that uh, was ever put on the ice, so. These two Gretzky sticks are both from the 1991 NHL All-Star Game at Chicago Stadium. And they were provided to me by Randy Lacey, who was the trainer for the Blackhawks during that year. So your provenance comes down to, uh, they've got the jack, the gripper on them. They're both, uh, if you look at the end of the shaft, they're both marked, this one with an all-star and this one with the proper code. Uh, Gretzky always marked his sticks like that. The tape job is proper on these. Uh, you've got the correct stamping on the shaft. And that's what it comes down to is, I mean, everything always, whether it's jerseys or sticks or cards or anything, comes down to a matter of trust. And um, I don't take anything in in terms of consignment unless I absolutely positively feel 100% sure. A large collector base of uh, Canadians that like Tops baseball and American American football. The other thing, the interesting thing is that especially um, those of us that are a little older um, and were into baseball before the Toronto Blue Jays came into existence, uh, huge Detroit Tiger fan base here in Toronto as well as the Indians. And of course there's always those people who either love or hate the Yankees. Uh, I guess the most expensive stuff is, you know, uh pre-war hockey cards, you know, but this weekend has been fun. It's a lot of old uh, hockey pucks, you know, so it might surprise some people. They're pucks, you know, but uh, yeah, some two and three hundred dollar pucks. It's a good variety of all kinds of uh, different things. You're seeing vintage basketball, you're seeing uh, uh, new uh, key rookies in hockey, vintage hockey. It's a fun show. Collectors had the chance to get the uh, limited edition uh, Crosby All-Star figs and then also our redemption uh, you know, non-stop lines. The redemption program still has the same legs that it always does and people love it. We love doing it. They're trying to sell the product just like everybody else. But when the customer comes up to their table, they can say, hey, if you buy this today and you go over to the indie game booth, you're going to get this for free. Then there's things you just collect that you look for, like rare old programs, things that, uh, that I like personally. If you've but... never done the show before, make sure you bring three to four people to work in your booth. You can't get out and walk the floor and enjoy what's here and the rest of the dealers and, and kind of make contact with everybody else. You've got to have an hour every day as a dealer and as, a, as somebody coming in as a, as a buyer or just somebody wanting to look around, you've got to have at least a day. We purchased uh, the, the first hockey card that was ever made, the 1910-11 uh, C56. Uh, Imperial Tobacco, uh, number 37, salesman sample of New Zealand. Half of what we do at the show is sales, and half of what we do is marketing, because you know our store is 60 miles north of Toronto, and yet we have regular customers 
that uh, that we find here that travel up to deal with us in Barrie just because they met us at the show. I hate to say that a lot of these people I've seen their babies grow up and they're gone their way to college now. Um, we come as much to visit. Um, we have an exchange of money and cards, which is what I'm you know we're here for, and they know it. But uh, I have a lot of. A lot of people that uh, I've become very friendly with and I look forward to seeing. And we've sold things that I necessarily probably would never sell at my store. I picked up a whack of 1996-97 game-worn Toronto Raptors jerseys and we're almost gone. We've got one Doug Christie left and a Marcus Camby. Going back to the early days, everything was about cards and, and uh, now there are just so many more things. People are into jerseys, people are into autographs, people are into uh, McFarland figures or toys. It's as strong as ever. A lot of the, the stuff has moved, moved into the high-end uh, stuff for the state. You've seen a, a huge explosion of the, the high-end stuff taking taking off in price and going up a lot, and that's that's been a, a big change in, in the recent years. But uh, no, there's still lots of collectors for the vintage stuff for sure. Before it was excellent, mint, very good. Now it's one to ten in grading cards. A eh? big difference when the cards graded at ten, boy, you're getting three, four, five times more than what the book says. Uh, it's amazing what's going on with the business these days. Internet is not helping shows, you know. So sometimes dealers prefer to stay home and uh, do business over the internet instead of coming to the show and have real contact with uh, collectors and uh, customers, you know. It's a shame, though. They want to touch it. They want to feel it. They don't want to have it shipped with credit card. That's why the show will always be good. People want to come here and buy products. You can see a scan, a picture, but that doesn't say much. Tickets are now on sale for Gilbert Cabot, Rick Martin, Rene Robert, The French Connection. This is the final call, final call for running back Jim Brown. First Hall of Famer for the Vancouver Canucks, 2012 inductee. I've given out a couple free cards to some kids that walk by. Kids with their parents are always great, you know. You gotta make sure the kids are always having fun. That's the key. Giving them a free admission at the door is very important. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, we need to keep the hobby alive. That one's five bucks. This one's five dollars. I didn't see it. Man, I had an eight-year-old kid pick up one of these Gretzky sticks and basically gave me the same synopsis for the stick that I know about the stick. It, that's just um, unbelievable. We're on schedule to do it twice a year for the fall and the spring expo. It's a great chance for us to, to connect with uh, you know, uh, passionate hockey fans. It's a good opportunity for us to increase brand awareness and show our latest offerings. I just had a fella come up with a Crosby one of one Onyx Black Diamond. That's probably a $20,000 card. And he's very interested in consigning it through us. We would never have made contact with him if it wasn't for the show. The hobby interest has kind of come and gone uh, in different ways, and it's great to see that after all this time, so many people coming out and so much passion for collecting still. I do more business in this show than probably my 10 next best ones added together. The $500 for the booth outweighs anything I do in the States. Constant traffic, the dealer-to-dealer -dealer action. They distribute 100, 150,000 catalogs to people. They all have my name on it. No parking, hotel rooms available. The biggest and most loyal hockey collectors in the world come from everywhere to this show. They come from Japan, England, the States, all over Canada. I've been doing this 16, 18 years. There's no show in the world that is 50% as good as this one. And I don't say it to impress the promoter or anybody. That's the way it is. And I've never sat at the expo for more than a half hour and not made a sale or a buy, and that's a big thing for me. I thank him every year <laughs> that he has this show. Everybody talks about what a great show this is. We're happy to be here. Well, thank you, Ken. Thanks for coming. You're welcome, Al. <laughs>